that could have gone a lot better. Yeah. Right, let's try that again. What I forgot was that um, I had to click this for it to tell me the other conditions. Um, that's my bad. <coughs> Sorry, Ross, but you survived last time, so you know, nothing to worry about. I really quite like the um, <laughs> the cool 543C1. It's quite a nice little ship, this. Go. I'm literally just aiming us straight up. Because we, we are only concerned about height, we don't have to. You know, if we do get to the, the top of our orbit and we have fuel left, we may as well try and go for this other location actually. So this early stages of the um, of our space program is pretty comparable to oh, oh this is what happens when I talk about the science and I just don't pay attention to what our actual engines are doing. Since I'm a physicist, not an engineer. Um, I mean, this is pretty comparable to uh, the American Mercury program, uh, which was the, the first um, rigorous program of American astronautics. Um, interesting historical note, actually. You'll notice that up until, I think it was the mid-70s, or it might have even been the 80s, all astronauts were men. There were no female astronauts or cosmonauts. Um, and interestingly, the Mercury astronauts, so this was in the 19... Late 50s, early 60s, were meant to be half male, half female, uh, until the Navy top brass got uh, hold of this idea and said that women can't be astronauts because you know they should be at home and doing womanly things like cooking and making babies and all that kind of thing, uh, which of course is rubbish. Uh, so they they scrapped all the, the female astronaut program. And it was set back decades, uh, which is something that I am slightly annoyed about because women make actually better astronauts they're lighter they have less risk of oh we're at the right place uh fire right let's shut that right down um good so we've got that contract let's see can we let's try it actually let's wait till we get to our apple apsis and let's try and burn um yeah women make better astronauts they're they're lighter they they consume less calories they are less prone to some of the heart diseases that you get in due to space flight you know there's a, there's a lot to be said for female astronauts Oh, where are they? Oh, I need to turn on navigation. Uh, oh, maybe that's what this pink thing was actually meant to be for. Oh, I'm such a noob. Right. Let's see. What this thing does. Let's take a crew report. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> How are we doing? Okie dokie. So we're now pointing in the right direction. Now what we need to do is burn more in that direction. Come on. We haven't got much fuel, but you never know. Maybe this is the, the chosen mission where we actually get it. Keep me pointing in the right direction. Come on, come on, come on, Mary. Well, that's as good as you're gonna get. You know what? I think we might have just nailed it. Come on, come on, Mary. We need to be above 16,400. How high are we now? Okay, so we've got, wow. Okay, that's dark. Oh, come on. This is, oh. you know what, screw that contract. So yeah, the Mercury program everyone tends to forget about because the Mercury program was obviously superseded by the Apollo program, which everybody knows about because, you know, it was it was pretty cool. Um, but they were the people that actually laid the, the groundwork. The, the men that did it were unbelievably brave. Uh, the, 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 the fact that they were doing something which people didn't even know if it was possible. People didn't know if it was possible for humans to survive space flight. Um, so the Americans, along with the Russians at the time, of course, um, laid so much the groundwork, which I suppose we take a little bit for granted, really, today. The notion, even, that it's possible for this, this stuff to, to be done. Right, parachute. Not sure if this is sunrise or sunset, but looks pretty. Um, so, you know, this is our own Mercury program. This is the YouTube Mercury program. Um, 
and with noble men like Ross Marion and Jordan McGonagall, never forget. Um, we're we're laying the foundations, and this is the thing about any scientific endeavour. It's always about subsequent laying down of steps. Like any scientific field, you have the basic papers that were written, in some cases, centuries ago, and people incrementally just add layers and layers and layers on top of it, and everything, it's like a tower. Everything that, that got you to that point is, is beneath you. You know, um, it's why science degrees tend to not do stuff which is modern until right at the very end, because you need to learn all of this this historical stuff. Like my physics course, um, you know, we didn't learn anything that was from the 20th century until third year. Um, it's actually, no, I tell a lie, we did some quantum in second year. That's a lie. Um, but, you know, nothing from the latter half of the 20th century until third year uh, or fourth year in some people's cases, I think. So, you know, this is this is the basics. Might not be very glamorous. With a successful splashdown, of course. Um, it might not be very glamorous. I love... We get more science from just lying in the ocean than we do from, you know, space. Um, it might not be very glamorous, but this is what we need to do. And we've got lots of money! And lots of science! Which means... Oh. Uh, Right-click, Simon. If I do that, do we have enough money? Hang on. How much does this cost? Oh, each okay. So a ship generally costs Biohazard 07. Sorry, the cool five four three two one costs about eight thousand. So we can upgrade this. So now, now we can take up to one hundred forty tons, which is great. Just what we need. And I think that's where I'm going to end this session. Um, let me know what you guys think. I'm very sorry if I haven't been talking about the science or the history enough. It's quite difficult to not get engrossed in what you're doing. Um, you know, it is rocket science after all. Uh, actually, maybe that's something I could talk about next time. Rocket science is, is relatively easy. Rocket engineering is difficult. Um, thank you for everybody who suggested their names. Um, I'm keeping a tally. Um, I, I have enough Kerbalnauts for at least the foreseeable future. What I now need is um, lots of ship names. I need you guys to tell me what we should be calling our ships. Uh, and equally, if you have any feedback on like what we do you think we should be doing, um, if you have any ship designs, um, equally, if somebody wants to do a flag for the YouTube Space Agency, that would be amazing. And um, I will do another session quite soon. So keep, you know, leave your stuff in the comments and uh, and tweet stuff at me. And uh, hopefully they'll be included when I next do some recording in probably about a week's time. Thanks very much, guys. Thanks for watching my playthrough of Kerbal Space Program. This is really the YouTube Space Program, I suppose. This is where I am putting YouTubers and their spaceships into space. If you would like to be part of the Kerbal Space Program, then please comment below and I will add you to the roster. And equally, if you have any ship names, or if you have a ship name that you yourself would like to pilot, please comment down below and I will try and get you in the game. Lastly, if you have any suggestions for topics I should talk about over the top of gameplay when I remember to, then please also leave those down below. In particular, I'm going to be looking at rocket science and rocket history, but if you think there's anything else that would be relevant, please let me know. Thanks very much for watching.